Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today, I'm setting myself up for a whole lot of pain. Now, if you remember the video that I did where I tried to fix Andy Pandy in the eBay repair challenge, the pull cord toy, and I had a complete and utter nightmare with him. But I didn't want it to let me completely beat me. So what I've done is I've bought another three. So I'm uh, hedging my bets here. If I get three of them, surely even I can get one of these working. So what we've got here is a Womble. Not sure which one. I need to look into it. It's been a long time since I've watched them. For some reason, Orinoco sticking in my mind, so I know it's not Uncle Bulgaria. I can't really remember the names of the other ones, but uh, I'm thinking that that might possibly be Orinoco. We've got Mickey Mouse here. This one is absolutely filthy. And we've got Rupert the Bear here. Bit of a story behind Rupert, so I'll tell you that in a minute. Now, these are all made by Burbank Toys. You see the little logo there? That's that one. So they're made in England, which is nice. Well, nice for me, because it's where I'm from. And not a lot of things are made in England anymore. So, I'm not sure about the age of them. I think I know the age of this, because the seller told me when they got it. I'm thinking they're all going to be from the 70s and 80s. I'm not sure when the Wombles came out. Now, I didn't really watch much Rupert when I was young, but I definitely watched the Wombles, and I remember really liking it. I'm thinking the Wombles, because it's Wombles of Wimbledon, they basically went around, and these were like the very first recyclers. So they would go out, picking up all the rubbish that the people left behind, and then they would make things out of it. I'm thinking it was just a UK-based programme, but I could be wrong. Maybe it was aired in other countries, but I don't know. Obviously, if you're from America and you've know about the Wombles, pop it down in the description. Now, after I did that video with the uh, aforementioned Andy Pandy, I was contacted by a guy called Martin, I think it was on eBay originally, and he basically told me all the sayings that Andy Pandy should have said, because there was no information about Andy Pandy online, no matter where I looked, there was very, very, very little information, in my opinion, with Paul Cord Toys in general, but especially with that one. I couldn't find out anything he was saying. And I remember I was having real trouble with the two things that Andy Pandy did say. And Martin, his name's Martin, gave me a whole list, I think it was like 12 or 13 quotes that he said, and it was so good to finally see what he was at least trying to say. So uh, Martin has been contacting me back and forth, and he has been so helpful. I mean, I can't even tell you how helpful he has been. So he's basically told me everything that I need to do. And not just that, he's also given me spares as well. So on the last one, I think I was using, I think I was using Walkman belts, but he's given me like the proper O-rings to use, the right size and stuff, because it all makes a difference. Too tight, too loose, it's all gonna make a difference. He's given me the pull cords to use, uh, all little things in here. These little, you know, the uh, rings that you need to actually pull with, ferrules, little felts in case the, the governor thing that spins round, sometimes the felts can wear down and then it doesn't slow down because it pulls out, it will make, it pushes out, it will make more sense later. But he's basically given me so much help. Now, he, uh, he just does this purely for fun. I mean, a lot of people get into collecting that way. They buy kind of broken things because it's cheaper and then they repair them but uh, if you've got a particular toy that maybe you want fixing and stuff he doesn't he doesn't offer this as a service but if you were really interested if something had a lot of sentimental value then you can always contact me I can contact him and if he's interested maybe I can uh, join you two together he's UK based though so obviously postage would be easy if you were in the UK now uh, out of all of them I would personally like to get the Womble working because that's my favourite, but this one here, Rupert, has got a lovely backstory. So, I bought it, it wasn't a lot of money, let me tell you the price of each of them. Roughly, Rupert was around £9, including postage. Mickey here was around about £7. The Womble was the most expensive as, at £16 because I think it's the rarest. 
And this transaction, I mean, all the transactions were fine on eBay. You very rarely get cons when you're buying something like this on eBay. But this transaction here, it was a lady called Bev, and it was just lovely. It was just like the perfect transaction. Messaged me when it was posted, messaged me when she got the money from PayPal, etc., etc. And then when it arrived, I had this little note here, and it just says in it, and just make sure if there's no right okay yeah i've peeled the address off it says hello remember i didn't ask for any of this it just says hello rupert has been mine since new he used to say my best friends are bill badger and you another thing he said was i'm rupert bear from nutwood and she said she can't remember the third one I'm, i'd be surprised if there was only three sayings because some of these other ones like that andy pandy definitely said over 10 sayings i think it was 11 or 12 or 13 uh, regards bev so basically, uh, when I seen that note and stuff, I contacted her and I said basically, you know, thanks a lot, Rupert's arrived, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to be filming him for a YouTube video. If you're interested, I give you the link when it arrives. And then she sent me a lovely message back. And I also asked if, if she knew how old it might be or the background of it. And she got back saying, hi, Vince, glad he arrived safely. I'm really interested in what you were using him for and would love to see the film when it is finished. Do hope you can get his voice working again. And it's... Uh, it's only in the last two years that it stopped. So, I mean, that's lasted a hell of a long time. I had a quick look in an old photo album and I found a photo of him on Christmas Day when I first got him. It was 1974. And then she just goes on to say uh, where, uh, where it was from. Now, 1974. So, isn't that lovely? So, she got this for Christmas when I presume she was very young. I didn't ask her age. But uh, yeah, now that's nice because there's sentimental value there. So I really do want to get Rupert working again. Rupert doesn't mean much to me, but obviously she's had it for all these years. It's going to mean something to her. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I don't want the video to go on for like three hours. So I'm going to be fast forwarding through most of it. But basically I need to unstitch them in a place that's hopefully going to be hidden. So maybe, I haven't made up my mind yet, but maybe on Rupert, for example, I might do it along this seam here. Because each of these will have a voice box in. This one's going to be easier because he's full of fur. So I'll probably just go straight down the seam at the back. I can feel there's a, a little seam here. And then when I stitch him up, because obviously my stitching is going to be awful, at least it will be hidden. And uh, again, this one looks like it's already been opened. Can you see the stitching across here? So I'm just going to go across here. Now, I don't know what's going on with this one here, but if you look at the floor, every time this thing gets wobbled, look at all that horrible dust coming out of it. Look. And I think what it is, is I asked Martin, look at that. I asked Martin and he said it's probably filled with foam. So the head on that one's probably filled with foam and it's breaking down after all these years. So basically, I'm going to be unstitching them all, taking out the voice box, and then hopefully in the voice box, I'm going to find that the rubber bands, the rubber belt, has broken. And it's the rubber belt that feeds a tiny little record, and there's like this plastic speaker thing. So there's no electronics in here. There's no batteries to operate anything. It's all done by, you give it energy by putting the string, which basically pulls, winds up a spring. Then the spring releases itself slowly because of this governor thing. That opens up and hits against a bit of plastic to make so this friction to make the record spin, or the spring spin slowly, which in turn spins the record slowly, which then allows the characters, characters to speak. So uh, it was really interesting when I seen the Andy Pandy one for the first time. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be opening them up each of them. I'm going to be working them on all at the same time. And then once I get the voice box fixed, I'm going to try to clean them up and give them uh, a good wash. I'm thinking if this is Orinoco, I'm sure I've seen another one of these on, I think it was eBay or it might have been just Google. And he had like a red scarf or something like that. So maybe I might be able to see if I can buy some felt from some like, hobby craft or something like that, something locally. So uh, yeah, that is it. Let's, let's get started on this. And if I get stuck on anything, I can email Martin and he will talk me through it. So my success on this should, I should have more chance than the Andy Pandy, but you never know. Things can go wrong. For example, Mickey might already be broken if he's been opened up before. Then maybe the record's missing. It might be cracked, smashed, who knows? But uh, let's get started on this. So I'm going to be cutting the stitches with this little seam cutter. You can get them for a couple of pounds on eBay and Amazon. 
and it's just got this little thing here that you put under the stitch and move along and I believe this part in here cuts it. So I think we're going to start with Mickey because he's already been cut open. So what you can do is you can get the stitch and once you pick it you can just move it along here and then by pushing it it just basically cuts it so it saves you having to get the scissors in and cutting it. notice on this one that the actual pull cord's gone completely so at least on these ones they still have the pull cord although they don't work I forgot to show you that but none of them work but this one is actually missing completely right okay that looks like how he's been opened up before the rest looks like original stitching so you can see they kind of use this blue thread and now we've gone back to white here and back to white here right okay I can see that this has definitely been this has definitely been opened before right okay uh, slightly disappointed because now that it's been tampered with already there's a chance that I'm not going to be able to fix it but we'll have to we'll have to see and the very fact that the pull cord is not in here ah uh, okay the very fact that the pull cord is not in here makes me think that maybe uh, maybe this isn't going to work again. Mind you, the pull cord, the string is here. Right, okay. Uh, see, this is what I was talking about, the governor down the bottom here. So the felt's missing from there, and it's not here, and I can't see any remains of it anywhere. So that says to me that a, a repair has been attempted on this. But just because it's been attempted, it doesn't mean that I won't be able to fix it. So we've got the needle here. So basically what happens is, this is the record down here, and when you pull this, it winds up this spring here. Then when you release it, the spring starts wanting to go back to its original state, which is unwound, and then it starts to move the record round, and there will be, oh, I can see the remains, oh, that's good. I can actually see the remains of the rubber O-ring here. There you go. Look at it, see it's just gone horrible. Look at that. It's amazing, it just kind of goes after all these years. It really does just go like black goo. And it goes through this governor at the bottom here. And it's this that stops it from spinning too fast because it moves out like this and it acts like a brake which hits against here. Hence the reason you have to have the pads on it so it can break itself against here. Now luckily Martin has given me this red felt so I can cut bits of this off and stick it on to act like uh, act like the brake. Now to get the sound out you've got a little needle here so this is obviously going into the grooves of the record so if you can imagine the side of inside of the record is a kind of like if you imagine a mountain and then this is moving up and down you wouldn't be able to notice it but it's moving up and down minutely which is the sound which is causing vibrations and then this part here hits against this and basically by moving up and down like that it's going to make the sound so it's traveling through here and it's going to then act this is amplifying those vibrations so that we can hear it so from first impressions it looks like all the parts are here so and I mean it must have been opened up okay and I don't think it's been touched in a long time because this rubber band is definitely not new whatsoever so uh, yeah okay that's that one there I think we'll put that to one side and we'll open up the others and then we'll try to fix them all at the same time well I've just noticed that there is a metal thing missing from up here there should be a little metal thing that goes in there No, so there is a few bits missing from here, which is going to cause me a little bit of bother. But I have been sent these ferrules here, so maybe I can just use one of them instead. Right, okay. Let's put all that to one side, and let's open up another one. I'm just going to get my hoover, because I don't want to be breathing in all this, uh, all this foam. It's kind of like fine sand. Right, let's open up Rupert Bear here. I'm just going to double check that that is the best place to open him. Yeah, I think it must be. Must be there. I can't see how else I would actually get into him. Yeah, I'm going to have to go across here. So I'm just going to stretch it until I find a little bit of thread that I can cut. 
I mean, I can tell that this definitely hasn't been opened before. Oh, there we go. Oh, excellent. Just unpicking itself. Here is the voice box in here. I'm just going to have to take out some of this. You know what? This foam is starting to uh, degrade, I think. Yeah, it's also going... It's kind of stuck together and stuff. It's not as fluffy as it used to be. What is weird about this Rupert is, and I looked at other ones, and they are actually from the factory like this. Look at those hands. I mean, that is a complete Frankenstein compared to the fur colour. Because the on the Rupert cartoons, the hands are the same colour as the face. So you can tell that rather than investing the money in making furry hands, they just took this off one of their other dolls to, uh, I presume, reduce the price of it a bit. But it just looks, to me, that just doesn't look right at all because covering up that face, it just looks like a human. And then uh, it just really looks very odd, I think. Yay, here we go. Excellent. Right, I managed to do that without undoing any more stitching because to me that's going to be the hard bit. Right, okay, this definitely hasn't been... This definitely hasn't been opened before. Now these are going to be very hard to open. What I'm going to use is, I've been told to use a wallpaper stripper. And then I will be able to go into it, because before I used like a Dremel tool to cut into it. And I caused quite a bit of damage. So I can just pry it apart by just taking my time. Right, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put all this old foam into a bag. I'm not sure whether this is... Yeah, do you know, I don't know, I mean, I might separate it and all use it again, I don't know. But it is kind of crumbling away to nothing, so it probably would be best just to use new stuff. The problem is I'm kind of battling against, I want to keep it original, because this is how it was originally. You know, it was stuffed with this back in the 1970s. Uh, but at the same time, I suppose if it gets to be like Mickey in a few years and all these bits of foam are just going to be coming out of here, and it's horrible because nobody can use Mickey. So I think realistically I probably am going to have to change all this. So before I break into here I'm just going to tidy all this up and then I'm going to cut into the Womble and then I can deal with the boxes all at the same time. So with the Womble I think it's best just to go straight up the middle of the back where this seam is here. There we go, this is filled with foam as well. You know what, the foam must just be a Burbank toy thing because the other Andy Pandy one wasn't. It was filled with all this, uh, same as Mickey's got in his legs, this kind of, this stuff here. So that must just be the difference between them, I wonder. Or well, maybe if they want it to be more firm, they put foam in. That could be it, couldn't it? Because it was Mattel that did the uh, Andy Pandy. This foam here looks a lot cleaner and it's not breaking down as much, so I'm thinking that this Womble's a lot newer than the old, the other two. I'm reckon, I'm thinking maybe Mickey might be the oldest out of all of them. There we go. So it looks like they're all using the same voice box. If you look at that colour there, that colour there, and uh, Rupert over there. In fact, Rupert's a little bit, is it darker or the same? Yeah, a little bit darker, but they all look to be roughly the same sort of design, don't they? Right, okay, let me clean this up and get a bag to put all this stuff in. Well, now just thinking about it, there's no point in me sort of cleaning and tidying and cleaning and tidying all the time. So, I need to wash all these because they're absolutely disgusting. So what I'm going to have to do is, 
I'm going to have to give them a good bath, aren't I? Give them a good wash, in which case then I really don't want the foam to be inside them because it's just going to take forever to dry and it's going to be all damp and stuff. So I think what I might as well do is take the stuffing out of each and every one of them and keep them in their own bags and then I have the option, you know, whether I want to use the original stuff or replace it with new stuff. Uh, but either way, I think I need to take all the stuffing out of them and it will make it easier for me to work because I can then turn this inside out so I've got more room to work. Okay, who would have thought so much foam could come out of one little womble? But that is that done now, so it means that when I come to wash it, I don't have to worry about drying all this. So I'm going to bag all this up before the wife sees what a mess I've made, and uh, then I can do the same with the other two as well. That's all the stuffing out of Mickey. I was sure there was going to be foam in this because of all this mess here. The weird thing is, when I take the clumps here and whack them on the floor, there's nothing coming out of it. All this is just in the fur and stuff of Mickey himself. So I'm wondering whether this was like left outside or some kind of I don't know if that's sand or I really haven't got a clue what that stuff is. I really don't know, unless there's... I mean, it does look like disintegrated foam, but I can't see where the foam would have come from. It seems to be all over his head. But there doesn't appear to be any foam on the head anywhere. I really don't know, but it's all in the hands. Really weird. Right, well, I'm going to... Uh throw him just in a sink of water before we go any further because it's just leaving a mess everywhere and then I can worry about using some products on him later. Okay so look at this I've just put some fresh water in there and dunked him a few times there's no products in and look at the state of it and it looks even worse with my own eyes than it does in here. So I think now seeing this what I'm going to do is I'm also going to clean the other two before breaking the voice boxes open. So I'm not going to get the voice box wet because obviously there's a metal spring in there. So I'm just gonna leave the voice box hanging over the edge here, fill it up with water quite high, and I'm gonna dunk them a few times to get most of the dirt out, drain it, give them loads of different rinses, and then I'm gonna clean them with OxyClean, and hopefully then it will make them nice and fresh, and then I'll work on the voice boxes after that. Well, I've got to be very careful here because I can see it's starting to break around where the heavy feet have been hanging off this for ages. Yeah, so you can see now the fluff's out. You see there's a fairly big hole here. And also, if you look at this one, I haven't taken the stuffing out of this one yet, but all around the edge here. Oh, in fact, it's been repaired, look. It's been repaired here in the past. So that's all gonna need to be repaired again. all empty now so I'm going to wash this and the Womble. Very worried about these feet though they are falling apart so I'm worried about the weight of the water might just rip them straight off but we'll have to see what happens. Right so I've put a load of this stuff in this Vanish Oxy action and look at the state of this water. Look at it. Oh. It's, uh, it's brown. It is actually brown water. So I'm going to keep letting these soak and moving them around and stuff and then uh, take them out give them a good dry and crack into these voice boxes and try and get them fixed. Right, they're all drying nicely now. And I think they're a different colour. I'll have to wait until they're completely dry before I can fully see how well they've come out. Okay, so they've all been washed now. They're still not fully dry, but they're dry enough for me to work on the voice box. So I'm gonna start 
on probably the Womble and then just work my way through the others. Right, okay, let's prize open this box here and we'll see what it's like inside. Now, a bit of a rookie mistake, but when everything was sopping wet, I had them all piled up and a lot of water has gone into both of the voice boxes. Also, when I was washing them and hosing them down, water was splashing everywhere. So uh, there's probably going to be quite a bit of water inside, but I don't foresee it being a massive problem. The record shouldn't be damaged and all the spring and stuff can be cleaned up because I'm going to be cleaning it all anyway. Right now, so the way to do this is basically to keep it, it wants to break along the seam, but you've got to be careful because if you just go for it, then what might happen is it might end up cracking along the plastic. But the weakest part will probably be the glue seam. So apparently if you kind of flex it like this and give it a wiggle, then you might start to find the bit that's starting to break on it. Right, okay, so this is wanting to pop off here, but that's no good to me. I need it to break along here. Oh, here we go, it's already broken here. Right, so, nice and easy. So what I'm doing now is getting my filler knife and I'm just gonna go in there. There you see exactly what I'm doing, look. This one's gonna come apart, hopefully, relatively easy. So I'm only going in a little bit. And hopefully, is that gonna go there or not? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's starting to go. Right, but here now, can you see the plastic is nearly starting to crack. I'm not sure if that's going to go along the seam. Let's give it a little helping hand. Or whether it's going to go... No, it's okay, it's going along the seam. Right, okay, it seems to have stopped now. Just kind of giving it a wiggle both ways, hoping it will uh, want to break along the seam. Okay, right, nothing's happening that side. Let me go back this side now. Yeah, so you, can you see, sometimes the plastic's going to break instead, look. Do you know what, I think that is just the glue overlapping the plastic, I think. I think I am still on the seam. Right, I think that's the top half done from here. It looks like it's gone all the way along, so now I need to try to get it done from this bit, but this isn't really wanting to go. Oh. Now you've got to be careful where you do this because do you see this little black bit here that's just flung out? That's part of the, the original rubber o-ring and look how dirty it is. It makes an absolute mess everywhere. So look at that. See if that's going to get on your carpet, it's going to ruin it. Okay, it's starting to break up here now.
Excellent, right, okay. So it's uh, nearly gonna go. Before I go any further, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my locking little four set things. You can buy these from eBay for a couple of pounds. And what they do is they lock into place. So I'm gonna put out the string about halfway because I'm hoping to reuse this string. So that's all the way, so about here. And I'm gonna put this on here. And I'm gonna lock it into place like so. Okay, and that's gonna that's gonna keep it there. If you're worried about it undoing, then what you can do is you can duct tape it to a part to stop it from undoing, but I think I'm gonna be okay. I'm not planning on being on in here for very long. Well, I'm nearly there now. I can see one of the pads has come out. This is for the governor, the thing that spins. So that's going to have to be stuck back on. Right, I'm going to have to get a screwdriver in there because the knife's a bit big. Okay, there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I want to hold it all in place so it doesn't go flying out anywhere. Excellent. Right, you can see the horrible mess of the remains of that rubber o-ring down there. Wow, there's hair and everything in here on the needle. Well, I'm hoping to do this now without having to undo everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some tape and I'm going to tape it across here so it doesn't go flying out. Let's just take the needle off. Put a bit of this over it. It would have been best to do this straight away, but this looks like it's kind of held in place quite nicely. So I'm just going to put that along there and now hopefully that won't spring off. Right, so what I'm gonna be doing is, basically I'm just gonna be cleaning every single part of this to begin with, and then I'm gonna be kind of looking around the place to see if there's any wear or anything like that. Just to try and get all the dust and grime out. All the old bits of the O-ring before it makes a mess everywhere. Okay, so I've got some Q-tips now, some cotton buds, and I'm going to go around in all the places, just getting rid of all the dirt and grime. I need to glue these two bits on here, because the other one's now fallen off, and I'm going to use, I'm pretty sure this will be fine to reuse, rather than putting new felt pads on, it's just that the adhesives come away. I'm going to use like a rubberized glue, so then hopefully it will soak into it, it won't go rock hard and it should stay on there quite nicely. And then I have to grease up everything, and this is the stuff I'm going to be using, is synthetic grease. And what I have to do is I have to clean the tracks in here, because there's going to be the remains of the O-ring. So I just need to get a Q-tip in here and keep turning the record round, and then in turn it's going to clean the actual middle part here. If there's any bits that I can't get, then I'm going to use a bit of IPA to clean it, but you can see there it's coming off there. Just clean up the record with the brush here, just to make sure the grooves are nice and clean. 
A little trick that Martin told me is if you have a look here, this little metal part here goes into this bit and then the string goes up into that corner there. So what happens is after many years of use, there's a chance that this little brass thing here will wear on one side. So if you look very closely, if it's worn, what you can do is just simply turn it round the other way. So now, for example, if I look here, yeah, I can actually see that it is a slight bit of wear on that side there. It's not going to come up in the camera. Well, one second, let's see if it does. Okay, so the side opposite the string now, you can see that there's just ever so slight bit of wear because obviously that's where the string's been moving around all those times. So what I'm going to do is put it the other way around and then it's going to be moving up and down on a fresh bit. And I'm just going to get my soldering iron and I'm just going to tap the plastic here. Stop it popping out because at the moment it keeps popping out. So once I get it into place, all I have to do is get the soldering iron and slightly bend over these little bits, just a tiny bit. And then if you have a look here, this little bit will fit into the middle of it. So I'm, I'm only going to do it ever so slightly, so hopefully this will still fit into the middle. I may have to trim this down. I know obviously you can cut this off completely, but I want it to stay in there if possible. But I might have to kind of like make this a little bit thinner if I move those bits in, because otherwise what happens is this keeps popping out and it can be a little bit awkward. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to grease up the different parts. So I'm going to grease this little hole here and then I'm going to be greasing up the uh, hole here and also this one here. And uh, a little bit around the needle arm here and then what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to take off, if possible, using both hands, I'm going to try to peel back the, the duct tape duct tape and I want to get a little bit of grease where the axle goes just underneath the, the record just in the other, you know, the female down there. But that's that's going to be quite hard. But to begin with, I need to glue these bits back onto here. So let me sort that now, and then I'll come back to this. Well, so I'm just going to use the rubber glue from a puncture repair kit. Okay, so they're on there now. I'm just going to let that dry. Right, okay, I'm going to try to take this off now in one go. Hopefully it's going to hopefully it's going to work. Now, if it does all come undone, it's not the end of the world, but with this one, I'd like to keep this one simple because when it comes to doing a Mickey Mouse one, I'm going to have to, you know, tension up this spring so much. I'm going to have to put a new uh, string and stuff on it, so I would like this one to be relatively simple. That's why I'm not changing the string and everything. And also, although the string is a bit dirty, there's no fraying or anything. It looks good. I'm going to try to take this off in uh, one, one go, like that, excellent. Okay, so that's what I didn't want to happen. Okay, that's it. Oh, there it goes. Right, so it's just unraveled there. So now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get the right amount of tension on it again. So that's a bit unfortunate, but I really did want to grease and clean down here. In fact, there's still a little bit of the old O-ring there, so it's just as well I did take that off. Right, so I didn't hold on to that well enough. Just gonna give it a, a few revolutions. But okay, this has completely gone against me now, so uh, luckily Martin sent me this thing here, which he, I think he made out of a takeaway container. Now I'm worried about scratching the record, so I'm going to use this to cover over the record, and now hopefully the spring won't, uh, won't scratch up the record. I'm really annoyed about that, I should have held on to it tighter. These little mistakes like that, that then end up make costing you, uh, you know, an extra sort of half an hour or an hour in time. Well, at least I can play around with this now without worry about uh, damaging this. Right, well now I've ruined it anyway, I might as well renew the string. I didn't want to have to do this, but I might as well do it now and it will be nice and clean.
Okay, I've threaded that through there. That was not an easy job. So you can see it's just got to go through that little bit. It's very small. The string's quite thick. What I'm doing now is I'm just going to put a bit of tension back on this spring. Not really sure how much to do. So I'm just going to do it, test it, do it, test it until it uh, sounds right. Right, looks like these are setting very nicely. I'm going to leave them a bit longer, but they definitely feel hard now. So I'm just heating up the soldering iron, and I'm just going to melt just a tiny little bit here, just to stop this thing from popping out all the time. Now I remember to place that thing in the right position so it's on the fresh part rather than the old part that's just a tiny bit worn. Right okay that's not going to go anywhere now but because I've gone right the way over I am going to have to get the lid and just melt away the top part of the lid. What I'll do is instead of melting it I'm just going to cut it. I think that should do. Okay, so I'm going to pop on one of these O rings now. Now you're probably curious as to the size of these. Let's see if I can measure it for you. Right, now this is just going to be a pure approximation because obviously this isn't uh, a perfect circle. Let's try to make it so it looks like a circle. Hold on. Well, I would say that looks kind of round like it is now. And it is reading 56 millimeters on the internal. Let me just see if that looks about right there. Fifty six, maybe fifty seven. I'm not sure how fussy you have to be with it. And the actual diameter of it looks to be Let's do it so it just catches. There you go. About 1.8 millimeters. Right, let's pop this in. Be careful not to get any grease on this at all. Right, so the belt goes like this. It goes round underneath the big record, you can see it down the bottom here. And then this particular part here, let me just get it out without damaging it. It goes just into that clear pulley like that there. So it doesn't go around the pulley, just goes this side here. And it goes around the governor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop the governor into place. Basically it goes like that there at the bottom, you see? So it doesn't go around that pulley at all, that just keeps it in place. Well, I'm going to take off this record protector now. And I'm going to place the needle here.
Right, and basically the string goes underneath the needle like this so that when you pull it, it actually resets the needle back into its home position again. So that's the mistake I made before. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of put it back together and see how it's performing and then I'm going to have to you know, keep adjusting this spring and keep winding this a certain amount of times until I get it right. But let's just try it like this at the moment. I'll just put a bit of grease around the place. And grease on top here as well. Before I put the lid back on, I'll just show you what's what. There you go, so you can see string underneath the needle arm, needle arm up in this position. That's it wound like that now, but I'll probably have to open it again to change it. And this is the governor in this bottom part here. And obviously you have to put this back in this top part. So uh, the string's not going back in now, so I've pulled it and it's not going back in. So obviously I've got something wrong with the spring or something or other. So let me see if I can work out what's happening. Now because I mucked this one up quite badly by letting that spring go, this could take me a long time, just like it did with the Andy Pandy one. So I think what I'm going to do is, because I don't want this video to go on, like I said earlier, for hours upon hours, I think I'm just going to fast forward through this until I get it correct. Well, I think it wants to go now. I think that rubber o-ring at the bottom wasn't really properly seated in this clear pulley here. Let's try it now. Right, so as you can hear there, I've got the same problem again with it going like too quick or too slow. I can't really work it out. I think it's too quick, but then it seems to slow down. Yeah, it's too quick. So uh, I presume I need to slacken off that spring a bit. Right, so that's undone one revolution. Two, so I'm going to try that and then I might have to loosen it more or tighten it.
now we're getting it. Normal days are happy days. We Wombos are really very friendly. Do you know what? I think that might be it. I might play around with the, uh, with the uh, spring a bit more. I might loosen it once more, see what it sounds like, and then I might tighten it two more times to see what it sounds like. I wumble by night and I wumble by day. I think that's it, you know. Wumble up the rubbish. Put it in the bed. I wumble by night and I wumble by day. Remember, I'm a wumble. You be a wumble too. Remember, it's not taped together. When I'm moving it around the place, it's moving as well. So let me do it tight. Uh, let me do it tight there. But I've got a lot of string left over, so I'm going to wind some of the string in. is reminding me of the uh, Andy Pandy one it's just turning into a nightmare so now the records come away from this bottom assembly here so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take it all apart and I'm gonna have to glue that so then I'm gonna have to end up doing all this settings again now uh, I, again I've been filming for hours doing this so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back to this later when when I've got it working as it should be. So basically what I need to do is I need to glue the record back onto this bottom bit and then I need to keep adjusting and readjusting and readjusting until I get the sound right. Because now if I don't glue that, all that's gonna happen is, you can see that it's lifting up here. So the rubber O-ring is just going into the groove in there rather than in the place it should be. So I'm gonna put this around this record here before I do any damage to it. and I'll just have to let that spring go. Right, so I'll get back to this when I have this in a position where hopefully it might represent some sort of sound. Okay, I think this is it. Right, to me it sounds a little bit more Australian than uh, a Womble, but I've loosened it and loosened it and it always seems to be around that one there. So I don't think uh, I can't, I don't think I can get it to go any slower. So, uh, I mean, I've got nothing to compare it to, but at least it is understandable. We Wombles are really very friendly. So I'm thinking that's how it should be. So now to get it back together, 
Apparently it's best not to glue it because this O-ring will fail again. I mean, it might be 15 years from now, but it is going to fail again. So to make it easier for the next person to get in, it's best just to use electrical tape. And then I'm going to put it all the way round, and then it means in the future people can get into it. And apparently with this stuff, it doesn't go brittle and fall apart. So I'm just going to be wrapping it all up now. So I know it looks horrible, but remember, all that's going to be hidden, and now it means then that it's still accessible. I'm your very best Wumble friend. We Wumbles are really very friendly. Wumble days are happy days. Right, so now what I have to do is I have to get this little o-ring back onto here and it's a special knot you have to do so let me work out that knot okay so i want to be keeping the pull string less than one foot less than 12 inches otherwise it's going to become a choking hazard so right now i'm at about it's hard to tell looks like i'm at about 11 and a half so that should be fine let's all go wobbling today and it appears to be okay wobble up your toys when you finish playing Right, well, okay, you can find the knot online, it's very hard for me to sort of show it, but if you look at it there, you kind of have to pass it through and then tighten it up. Now, just to make sure, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do another couple of knots just underneath this one here, but that's nice and tight on that bit there. So right now, this, this Womble here just needs to be... Uh, stuffed full back up again and then I need to stitch it up and then I need to comb him to get him looking nice. Let's move on to one of the other voice boxes now. Okay it's Rupert's turn now, I'm hoping this is going to be easier. So what I'm going to do is exactly the same as before. Now I don't need to film this, I'm just going to be fast forwarding through it because it's exactly the same thing. It's the same voice box, I'm just going to be breaking the seal again and then putting a new o-ring in and hopefully this time I won't let it explode in my hands and I might be able to get it back together a bit easier. So, uh, let me fast forward through all this and I will stop if I see anything interesting. Okay, Rupert has behaved himself, so that was really straightforward, that one there. Just had to change the O-ring and give it a bit of a clean-up. Now listen. We play games on Nutwood Common. We love rowing on the lake with Sailor Sam. Find There you go. Right now, the problem I'm going to have with Rupert, which is a major problem for me because I can't sew, is he's all intact from here upwards. That's all good, apart from these boots. And these boots are absolutely falling apart because what's happened is it's just, there you go, you can see that one there. They're just breaking down. They're just worn away next to nothing, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that. I think maybe up the top what I can do is maybe cut it shorter and then just join that bit up to that bit there to have kind of like uh, smaller feet because they were very big anyway. But when it comes to these bottom bits here, really all I can do is stitch them up, but they're going to look a right mess. But at least now, I mean, he's come up really, really clean. So uh, now let's try to do the Mickey Mouse voice box, which will be hard because I will be doing this one from scratch. 
Right, okay, so there's a fair bit of work to do on this one, so I'm going to give it a clean up. I've got to put a new string on it, and uh, I need to put a cutter pad and put it on there. And I need to get this thing in here as well, try to make that fit in there. So this one's probably going to take quite some time. But again, it's the same principle as it was before. So let me crack on with it, I'll be fast forwarding through it all, and if there's anything interesting, I'll stop and show you. The record doesn't look in the best condition. It looks like there's a few scratches and stuff on it. So I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Right, this is a little bit big for here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to widen up this hole a little bit with the soldering iron and then try to get a little bit of plastic over the top. Just realised we're missing a piece here. We haven't got this bit here that clips onto the end. Uh, so this string's going to eventually just wear through this plastic. I'm going to have to see if I can make something up for this. I'm wondering if I use one of these, will that work? It might work, it might clip into there. Let's give it a go. plastic weld on there to hold it in place. Now although this isn't going to clip on to the actual body of the toy itself, what I'm thinking is when you pull the string it's going to want to pull this towards there anyway so it will probably sit into place. Also when I get it all together I might be able to somehow glue this onto there. I'm just using a UV, UV glue here and I'm just shining the UV light on it to set it off. Right, I think that's as good as I'm going to get it. Right, okay, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that is as good as it's going to get. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to run with that. Right, so I've got that bit there, so the wire, the uh, string is going to go through that, so it's not going to wear through the plastic. The problem is this is just going to come straight off, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little set of tape around here to keep it in place, the electrical tape.
Okay, so the next day now and I have been shopping and I am reinvigorated and ready to go at this challenge again. So what I've done is I've popped on to Hobbycraft and I've spent all my money on soft toy filling. So I've been umming and ahhing whether or not to reuse the foam that came in them because obviously that was the original thing. But after seeing the messes made everywhere with all that dust, I've decided against it. Now, Mickey doesn't have any foam in him, so I am actually going to reuse the stuff in because it's just all wool type stuff anyway. So I'm going to reuse that, but then on the other two, I'm going to be using this stuff here. Now I've bought six bags of it, I think two of them for £6 for two, so £3 each. So I'm hoping that that will uh, fill up the Womble and also Rupert the Bear as well. Now, although I would like to keep them original, I think the fact is they're kind of unusable because all that dust is just going to keep falling out of all the little holes. And remember now, there is a lot of holes in these boots here. The weird thing with Mickey is there was no foam in him, but what I think's happened is I reckon that on the face there might have been a very thin layer of foam in between both of these bits here possibly to make it a nicer finish because it's kind of see-through and you'll end up seeing the bits of broken foam on the inside hopefully that's not going to be an issue with this stuff in fact i don't even know what color this stuff is and there you go it's lovely and white stuff so that should look nice and so maybe when it comes to mickey's face i might try to put some of this stuff in otherwise you're going to see all the multicolored stuff underneath that's the only place that i can think that all that dust came from because remember there was loads in the hands so i reckon the hands and the face had a very thin sheet of foam in between stitched in between these two layers uh, but as far as the Womble and Rupert was concerned they were completely full of the foam which is all starting to break down so that's the decision why I've kind of made it non-original at least then the toys might be working again now when it comes to Rupert's boots what I've done is I've got some felt here they only had one color in the shop but luckily it's near well it's not really a match but it's not a million miles off so I think what I'm gonna do is I've bought some glue and I'm gonna put this inside the boots so I'm gonna kind of make them two layers so you are gonna see this on the outside but then you're gonna see this on the inside and hopefully your eye won't be drawn to it too much and I'm gonna then glue it on to this and hopefully that will give it more strength i might have to put some stitches and stuff in it as well i'm not too sure but i also bought this red here i need to check online but i'm pretty sure that this guy here had a red scarf so i just might try to just cut a scarf cut a hole put it in the middle there and then pull his head through and hopefully that might make him look a little bit better right i think it's time to get started i'm going to start on the one one i think Reusing this foam to wrap the voice box in and then putting all the new stuff in, in there. That's certainly nicer working with this than working with that horrible old foam. That's his head stuffed, so let's do the rest of it now. Just going to use a spoon to get right down into the arms. the voice box in is obviously the pull handle has to be down at this corner here and the speaker is going to be facing forward so the speaker is going to be talking out of the Womble's belly I'll tell you what I'm well impressed with these they're so tightly packed when you pull them out they just keep on coming I thought it might be a bit of a con and they'd be just loosely packed in there but it's absolutely loads I've done his head and both arms and I've still got I would say at least half the, the bag left now with these toys they were very tightly packed so I want them to be tightly packed again that is the Womble done and he somehow manages to stand up now as well before he wouldn't stand up so that's good so you can see it bulging out the back there I've got lots of uh, 
lots of padding in him. So now, once I stuff all the other ones, I need to try and stitch this one up, and then I've got to try to comb it and get rid of all these bits of foam that are all stuck from when I washed it, because all the foam was coming out from the inside and sticking in the fur. But hopefully I should be able to pick all them out and comb it all out. I'm happy with that one. Right, let's move on to another one. now so I'm gonna to have to spend a long time working on these boots down here that's gonna take I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do there but I'll do something yeah, he's sounding good again right okay so uh, let's stuff Mickey Mouse and then I can worry about sorting this out I've stuffed the head but I can actually see some of the old wool so I'm going to, have to take it all out now and make sure there's no bits of wool left so I think I'm pretty certain now that it would have been foam inside here and that's what's creating the dust otherwise the whole face would have looked like that down by his legs because when I pull it out it's going to have the wool all over it fur away now there is two red bits here I'm not sure what they're for and they do show up on the outside bit strange. Maybe it's to stop this bit stretching too much. I better leave them there because I don't know what they're for. Right, with those red things there, I think what I'm going to do is rather than having them sort of falling down this way, I'm going to push them up. Well, maybe they should be there for cheeks. Uh, no, I'm going to push them up out of the way up here. They look better up there. Right, I'm just going to get the phone for the voice box. <laughs> okay, so that is uh, Mickey's stuff now as well. So now I have to sew them all up. And I have to put the little uh, ring pull onto here as well. Now when it comes to the stitching, it's going to take me a long time to do this. So I'm not going to film it because I don't know what I'm doing anyway. I'm going to try to do it as neat as I can, but it's uh, they are going to be very visible. But saying that, there's nothing I can do about that. Now the, I'm not too worried about this one or the Womble. I think they're going to look okay. But I'm really confused about how this is going to look any bit. Now it's a shame because if you knew what you were doing, it probably wouldn't be that hard to just unstitch this and put a new one around here. But I don't know what I'm doing and I don't think that's going to work. It could be tempting though because I could reuse this front bit and the bottom bit. Well not on this one I can't. And just make a new bit around the edge. But the problem is when it comes to the stitching, it's just going to look really bad. And it will probably look worse than just having a brown thing in these ones here. I'm not too sure. I think I'm tempted because my stitching is going to be so bad. And also it could be weak as well. I'm tempted of putting this in here and putting loads of glue inside to stick it all together. To try to make it like one big piece. So that's what I'm going to be working on now. And then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll film if there's any interesting bits. And then when it comes to the, the final cleaning up and comb and the stuff, I'll start filming again. Okay, I'm really struggling on Rupert's feet here because every single time I move something, look at that. Can you see? It's just more and more thread worn and then the stuffing's coming out. So what I've done is rather than waste time, I've gone to Hobbycraft. I've bought three more sheets, they're only 50p each. So I spent £1.50. 
and I'm going to completely cover these. So I'm going to leave the old material there because then I have something to glue onto. I've already done the front here and I've already done the bottom, so now I'm going to do the sides. I don't know whether I'm going to get it done in one go like they did originally or whether I have to have a seam at the back, but either way it's going to look better than this. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is use this glue, put it on here, put it on here, stick it on and then stitch it all around the edges and that way then hopefully they will stay hopefully for quite a while because they feel pretty thick now when I've got this doubled up with the original material here. I think it's going to work quite well. Of course it's not going to look anything like it did originally because originally all the seams are hidden but I still think it's going to look okay even like that because they are for his boots and sometimes on boots you do have stitching on the outside anyway. Okay so that's one boot completely done. Now I know it doesn't look as professional as the professional one but the thing is it is nice and strong which is the main thing. So although this one does look better I am going to redo it because the thing is this is just going to fail here again after a little bit longer. So if it's completely covered I reckon this will last many years now. It feels very strong. So that's going to keep me busy for the next hour or so. So when it comes to the back it should be quite easy because this little flap off the jumper is going to sort of hang down. So all I have to do is go from this yellow part here up into this part here and then the stitching is all going to be hidden. There you go, you see, it's all hidden underneath here. Right, that's Mickey stitched up again. So now it's time to stitch up the Womble and I've got the perfect colour thread for it. It looks like it's exactly the same. Right, I'm going to start combing them now and trying to get, a, get out all the little bits of foam that's stuck in them and also try to get the knots out of all this fur. He's much fluffier than he was before. I still need to make that red neckerchief thing what I need to look online to see what it's supposed to look like. So let me comb Mickey now and try to get him untangled a bit. Oh wow, the jumper's really getting smoothed out when I comb it, so look at the back here, it's all bobbly. Now you can see it's gone more smooth. Right, so I'm just going to keep working on this for a bit. Okay, Rupert's starting to look a lot better now. He still needs a bit of work. I can see he's got like a black stain here. I think that might be from that rubber O-ring. The old one, I think a bit of it might have gone out and hit him. It kind of becomes a bit like tar, so that's going to need a little bit of work. But the jumper and the fur are definitely starting to take shape now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off this foot and then I'm going to give them all a good final clean and then I'll display them and make sure they're all working, go through each of them, pull the string a few times and just finish up the video. And just to fill in the eyes I'm just using a Sharpie, a permanent marker. So I'm not colouring in the whole thing, I'm doing it on Mickey as well. All I'm doing is I'm just placing dots where it's missing.
And because the mouth is so faded as well, I'm just going to use the same technique. Now I've looked up and uh, Sharpies are waterproof ink, but they will fade if it was to be washed. But the thing is, this is unlikely to be washed again. So, uh, and even if it does, if it fades, it can just be touched up again. So I'm doing the same technique again, just placing dots. Right, I'm going to let that dry before I touch it, but I think it looks much better. Okay, so I've been looking online, and this Womble here looks like he has a scarf. So Rupert already came with a scarf, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this one out here. It looks like the Womble one is slightly longer, and also thicker as well. So what I did is, I was back in Hobbycraft again, and I bought 25 centimetres off a big roll of felt. It only costs £3, so I'm becoming a bit of a local down at Hobbycraft. I'm, I'm one of the faces down there. I've spent so much time there over the last few days. So, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is measure out a little bit longer than the Rupert one and a little bit thicker as well. I think I'm going to do it twice the size of this because it definitely looks to be bigger. And then it's got, so I'm just going to sort of cut fingers in, it to get in, in the end of it. So hopefully it's going to be, hopefully it's going to be quite easy. So let's do that. Right, let's see what it looks like. So I think I'm going to fold it in half. One second, just need to neaten up this little bit here. Good thing is, because the Wombles basically just pick up rubbish and reuse it, then it means things like this doesn't have to be perfect, <laughs> because they've been thrown around the, in the first place. Right, so I'm going to fold it in half. I'm pretty happy with that. Well, I'd have to have a look online to make sure that that's how the, the knot goes, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to look like. Do you know what? I think it might be a bit long. I'm going to take some, I'm going to take some length out of that. Take a little bit of length off these fingers. There we go, that's better. Right, he's really starting to look the part now, especially with his eyes. I'm well happy with that. We bubbles are really very friendly. Excellent, right, let's uh, crack on with all the others, get these all finished up now. Okay, we are now finished, and it has been an absolute epic. This has taken me three days, and two of those days were near enough full days, and I'm not talking about eight hour days, I'm talking about, I don't know, 12, 14 hours? I don't know how it took so long, but these things just suck up your time. But I am so happy with the end result. So they're not perfect, but they're looking pretty good. I especially like the finishing touch of this scarf here on this Womble. So let me show you each of them now and show you what they say. So I think we should start, let's start with the Womble. That is closer to me. Now they do work, as far as I know, they work pretty good apart from Mickey. Mickey's awful, but Mickey's always gonna be a little bit hard to understand anyway. Now this Womble is really easy to understand, but to me, it doesn't sound like a Womble. But, I don't know. Not sure, but if you have a listen, right, so look at him here, you can see he's all cleaned up nicely, scarf looks good. So I would say that this now is in pretty, pretty good condition, so have a listen to a few of the phrases. Well, that's rubbish. Good job, Mickey. Well done. 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 Well done
put it in the bin. Wumble up the rubbish, put it in the bin. I wumble by night and I wumble by day. I wumble by night and I wumble by day. Let's all go wumbling today. I'm your very best wumble friend. I wumble by night and I wumble by day. Let's all go wumbling today. I'm your very best wumble friend. So the good thing about it is, sometimes they come out with things that you're not expecting. So I think each of them probably does have maybe about 11 or 12 or 13 phrases. But depending on where the needle lands is pure chance. So for example, on this one here, on Rupert, one of the sayings is, Constable Growler taught us how to cross the road. But I might have to do it 30 or 40 times to actually get it to say that. So I think we'll leave Rupert to last. Let's do Mickey now. So Mickey has been my biggest surprise. He looked absolutely awful. And now, although it doesn't really resemble the Mickey Mouse so much that I'm kind of used to, I think I'm more used to like the rounder face one. Maybe this is what Mickey looked like years ago. I need to, I need to look that up. But he has actually come up really good and really clean and stuff. So I'm very happy with how he's come up. I did the lips and uh, the mouth in Sharpie and that's come up well. I just touched up the eyes there. You can see when the eyes reflect that's a slight different colour so it would be better to use paint rather than Sharpie on that. The problem with this is the record was scratched and you can really tell and not just that but you know the plastic cone it did have a kind of little dent in it and I think possibly I didn't think that could affect it but it's really unclear and sometimes you get crackling I'm not sure if that's the record or whether it's that cone but you can understand a few of the things so let's give it a go now but so that says something about oh there's a mouse in the house okay it said the same thing again <laughs> He's just going to keep saying the same thing. Hold on now. There's a mouse in the house. That's annoying. Something about a friend. It's unusual. Normally it says different things. Something about Mickey is my friend. He does like that mouse in the house saying. That's a new one to me, but I didn't get a word of that. There's a mouse in the house. So I think what it is, is the mouse in the house groove must be slightly more enlarged than the other ones, or maybe the other ones are slightly scratched so it's hard to get the needle in. But what you can sometimes do is kind of do it halfway, let it go in a bit, and then go out. And then it might say something different. Something about a birthday party. But that one is hard to understand. But I'm thinking, even if he had really good, a perfect record, I bet he is harder to understand than the other ones. Now, Rupert, in my opinion, is very clear. Weird thing is, not all the time. Sometimes he can speak a bit quick, but most of the time it's clear. So if you look at Rupert now, he's come up really good. I mean, look at the jumper now. It looks... Uh, it looks nice that I've rubbed the comb against it, it kind of looks more furry. Scarf's perfect, trousers are perfect, head's perfect from what I can see. Shoes are bad, but at least now they're strong. Remember, these are the ones that I did myself, so they're, they're far from perfect. A little bit of glue there still dry, and it does actually dry clear. But the shoes, although they don't look good, they never look great anyway. They're a bit of a funny shape, but they're even more of a funny shape now. But at least... They are going to last, I think they'll last a test of time. Right, listen to Rupert now. We play games on Nutwood Common. We play games on Nutwood Common. We love rowing on the lake with Sailor Sam. We love rowing on the lake with Sailor Sam. My best friends are Bill Badger and you. Okay. We love rowing on the lake with Sailor Sam. So hopefully this is bringing back memories for Bev. Let's get him to save some more stuff. Can we go for a picnic? There we go, that was a new one. I live in a cottage with a thatched roof. There we go, that's a different one. I live in a cottage with a thatched roof. I live in a cottage with a thatched roof. Right, so now let's put it halfway. In a bit. And now out. I live in a cottage no, with a No, still doing that one. I live in a cottage with a thatched roof. 
Right, well, it seems to be stuck on that one at the moment, but it should be random because when you pull it, the record just spins, so it should the needle should land on a different groove each time, really. Right, it's really stuck on that one at the moment. Right, I'm going to just fast forward until I get that Constable Growler one. It's weird how I have to do it so many times in order to get that one to work. Yes, got it. Constable Growler told us when to cross the road. Perfect one to end on. Just so strange that you have to do it so many times to get that one. But as you can hear, there are quite a few sayings to get through. There might even be some that I haven't heard. Maybe there's a couple of grooves that don't work, or maybe I have to do it a hundred times to get those other ones. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm happy with how they've turned out but there really is a lot of work involved because it's not just fixing the voice box, you then, well, to begin with, you need to empty them all out and that takes a huge amount of time. If the toy was already clean and you just had to take them apart to do the voice box, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But all that horrible foam that's degrading in there, that creates such a mess. So you're constantly trying to clean up and it's just horrible to work with. Then you need to give them all a wash and then unfortunately there's just so many little repairs because everything's getting fragile on them and the cost of them doesn't warrant the work that goes into it because obviously if you had to add up time for two and a half days then there's no way, there's no way you're even going to see one tenth of that back but it's quite nice seeing something that was not looking good especially Mickey in my opinion he looked awful and now when you look at them I think they all look pretty good and hopefully these are, I think even a Womble is from the 1970s. So you're looking at something here, which could be, for example, I don't know, like between 40, it could be on average like 45 years old. And uh, well, we know that this one was in 74. So that brings it to 45 years, doesn't it? 45 years ago. So it'd be interesting to see now whether they're gonna be around in 45 years time be interesting wouldn't it are they going to last that long and I think they might well do because they're not showing any signs of breaking down these boots were but this Wombles as strong as anything Mickey as well and the rest of Rupert is really strong so if somebody was to make proper boots for him and if you were if you knew how to sew you could do that really easily then Rupert would actually look in my opinion nearly perfect so let's say if somebody was collecting them they could get the boots made by somebody who knows what they're doing on a proper sewing machine with hidden seams and then it would be quite an easy job just to get them stitched onto the top i'm sure that wouldn't take somebody very long if they knew how to do it so uh, yeah that is it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it it was a lot longer than i thought it was gonna be but still I, uh, yeah, I hope you got some enjoyment from it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.